Have you ever felt like you've hit a metaphorical wall? You know what you should be doing to improve, but something in you is just resisting the effort to rethink how you design. If you start rethinking that, you might uncover an emotional truth and end up concluding that some of your habits are going to have to change. That doesn't sound like very much fun, does it? Here we are, despite the uncomfortable truth that nearly everyone gets stuck, especially in creative fields like product design. There are concrete ways that you can re-examine how you are designing, how to push through imposter syndrome, and hopefully put in place some positive habits that will keep you in a cycle of creativity and learning. Before we dive into the world of design, I want to say welcome to my channel. My name is Jen Drews, and I talk about all things from career, lifestyle, to tech. If you're interested in any of these topics, take a second to check out my other videos. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment at the end. Facing your designs. I don't know what I'm doing yet. It's only a matter of time until everyone else finds out. There are so many reasons why a designer can feel stuck. Lack of creativity, getting burnt out, dealing with the design challenge that is so complex it feels impossible to break down. I can give a long list of all the possible reasons, but when it comes to actually improving, nothing is more effective than facing designs head on by time spent practicing. However, not all time spent practicing is equal and there are effective and ineffective ways to improve. If you want to spend a lot of time without seeing results, draw web and app screens for no reason. Believe me, I did this for months. I forced myself to spend time designing, I didn't have a clear goal and wasn't engaged in what I was doing. Instead, I became irritated because I felt like I was trying and wasn't getting better. If you want to get better at designing, it comes down to intentional practicing. Start by copying web or app screens that you really like, but then go the extra step of trying to understand why a designer made the choices they made. Along with improving visuals, designers need to build the skills of being able to match the current design systems and paradigms, communicating with clients, and working around developmental constraints. No growth will happen unless you're honest with yourself about where you need to improve and make a clear plan of how to improve. At the end, I'll tell you my design habit checklist. Before we go there, it's important to address the negative feedback loop causing so many of us to face a mental block. The creative imposter. When you procrastinate, you're not avoiding effort. You're avoiding the unpleasant feeling that the activity stirs up. Have you ever felt like you are unqualified, incompetent, lacking in skills, and unable to improve? Then you might be suffering from imposter syndrome. This is a limiting belief that most people will experience in their careers. When it tends to pop up for me is when I can recognize I'm not the best I could be, but I'm equally unsure of how to get better. It's like seeing a beautiful island off in the distance and then being hit with the reality that I'm going to have to build a boat and navigate it in uncharted waters to get there. Instead of being rational about how to find a solution, I get stuck in my head. This manifests in strange ways for designers by getting too attached to their work, not being able to take criticism, procrastinating, being unwilling to rethink problems, and blaming others for their mistakes. It's very self-destructive behavior. To push past this, it's important to take a step back, stop beating yourself up, and get yourself into a positive feedback loop to build confidence. Creating design habits. It's not about the traits you have, it's about what you decide to do with them. When creating better design habits, the first thing you should focus on is being clear on what you want to improve on. Then write down your large goals and break them down into manageable daily tasks. I'd recommend setting a timer for a minimum of 30 minutes a day. Use that time to focus completely by creating screens, reading through case studies, absorbing design method interviews, talking to designers, and keeping up to date on tools for the design system you use. Additionally, you can switch your mindset by visiting creative spaces, allowing yourself to be curious and finding joy in the process of designing. What works for everyone is different. Maybe you'll do best by finding accountability or you'll be incentivized by visiting your favorite cafe with a sketchbook. Whatever you stick with for a minimum of three months is the option that is best for you. Keep yourself accountable and those small habits will slowly start making progress in your long-term goals. When it comes to a habit change, small and sustainable is always better than dramatic and unrealistic. 
Building confidence through small habit changes will have a big impact. Whether you're struggling with imposter syndrome or looking for some concrete tips on how to level up your design skills, the part to remember is you'll get back in skill the quality of time and effort you put into it, and you can't rush the process. If you aren't a superstar designer today, it doesn't mean that your work is bad and it doesn't mean you won't be at the top of your game in the future. Stick with the process and have faith that your small daily habits will make a big impact on your future career. For the designers out there, what are the design habits that you've done that have improved your work? Comment them below. And for the non-designers, if you've never heard of product design before, go and check out some of my other videos on product design and creating portfolios. On that note, I'm going to go back to practicing my own UI work. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.